The Far Cry series is what I imagine sex with me is like. A nice buildup of mood and anticipation, but ultimately disappointing. But I don't apologize for that, so I shouldn't expect Ubisoft to either. In game, Joseph Zeed's church is on a small island on a river. In this opening cinematic, his church is located on the plains of Montana with no rivers in sight. They started buying up every farm for miles. Then the radio station. Not long after that, they even had the fucking cops. This game pretends that rural Montana is like North Korea. If the guy secretly recording this sermon was caught and executed, how did the documentary crew get their hands on it? No way would you be able to hear the audio of a cell phone video while in a helicopter. Ubisoft went with a silent protagonist for this game. Sure, none of the previous Far Cry protagonists were interesting, memorable, likable, or... Okay, maybe they have a good point going with a silent protagonist, but I still feel like sending it for making me do the work of coming up with a logic to explain it. Wasting your time, there's no signal out here. I get the feeling that cell phone technology really gets on the nerves of writers, since it requires them to bend over backwards to come up with reasons for why isolated people can't call out. You want me to ignore a federal warrant, Sheriff? No, sir. I want you to understand the reality of this situation. Joseph Seed, he's not a man to be fucked with. When has the federal government just sent one man to make an arrest? This cult is armed and violent, yet only one U.S. Marshal and a local sheriff was sent in to arrest a man surrounded by a horde of devoted followers. Why do you keep calling them Peggy's? Project at Eden's Gate, PG. Peggy's is what the locals call them. That is not why they call them Peggy's. We all know why people call them that. It's because it sounds like a sex act that's easy to make jokes about. They will come. They will try to take from us. Take our guns. Take our freedom. Take our faith. For a cult that spouts the usual dog whistles about the government taking away liberties, they sure don't seem to mind taking away freedom from those they have control over. Since Eden's Gate steals property, kidnaps, kills, drugs, and brainwashes the town folk. The secret ending at the start of the game was a cute idea in Far Cry 4. It really didn't need to become a staple in the series. It was fun because people didn't expect it, and you had to wait a really long time at a dinner table to trigger it. Here, they straight up tell you that you can end the game right now by not arresting Joseph, and I highly recommend this option, since it will keep you inside Steam's playtime limit for returns. Joseph isn't that worried about being arrested. He says it's because he knows God won't allow him to be taken, but I think he's just played enough video games to know that choppers always crash in the opening. Joseph is the only one who remains conscious after the crash, despite being the only one not strapped in. Not like the deputy could have answered dispatch anyways. Mute character, remember? Dispatch. Oh my God. Everything is just fine here. No need to call anyone. Yes, father. Praise be to you. And that's pretty much the only explanation given for why federal authorities are never sent in. Never mind the fact that a U.S. Marshal going missing while serving a warrant would certainly bring attention. Hello? Anyone here in me? Hello? If anyone's still out there, listen. If anyone's still alive... If only this character could speak, she could respond to the U.S. Marshal in distress. Here's what we're gonna do. There's a road out there. We're gonna take it. We're gonna head northeast. It's probably only a few hours back to Missoula. And then, we're gonna come back here with a goddamn National Guard. This sounds like a solid plan. Weird how no one else ever attempts it. Far Cry has always been a series that catered to the idea most men have that given the right situation and the right motivation, they could become the biggest badass in the world. In previous games, that meant going on a killing spree of indigenous people in a foreign country. Except now, Ubisoft wants to prove how understanding of the changing times they are. So here you are killing Americans in rural U.S. And you can be a female murder machine. Great job avoiding the controversy, Ubisoft. All the other fallout bunkers in the county are under the control of Eden's Gate. Save for this one that Walter White is holed up in and brings a deputy to after finding her on the shore. It means the roads have all been closed. It means the phone lines have been cut. It means there's no signals getting in and out of this valley. In one night, the cultists closed the tunnel leading into the valley, cut the phone lines, internet, jammed all radio frequencies, confiscated all personal planes and choppers, somehow closed off the river, and prevented people from hiking and climbing over the mountains to escape. When you encounter a game that requires you to suspend your disbelief as much as this one, you just know some dark prophecy has been fulfilled. They all think the world's coming to an end now. They've been waiting for it. For years. Don't you as well? I mean, you live in a bunker on an island. Get out of that uniform. We need to burn it. The cultists attack the deputy on sight anyway since they know what she looks like. Changing clothes will do absolutely nothing. Ubisoft is slowly but surely turning all of its franchises into Assassin's Creed games. This one even uses an open-ended hit list. There's gotta be people out there willing to fight back against this cult. We just, we need to show them how. We need to build us a resistance. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is get control of this island. And with that, the deputy forgoes the oath she swore to protect and serve and will now act as judge, jury, and executioner for every person she meets because a loner living in a bunker told her she had to. If Dutch has a radio, even a short-range ham radio set up, he should be able to get through to the outside world. This valley isn't that big. And just look how big his radio tower is. This will broadcast for miles. If you're gonna build a resistance, there's some things you need to know. There's four ways you can go about this. This is how you stretch a 10-hour game into a 20-hour game. Simply force a player to grind away with repetitive filler content to fill a progress bar before you let them do the important story missions. I know what you're thinking, and no. I ain't gonna have you climbing towers all over the county for me. I guess even Ubisoft has come to realize that their game design has become a joke. Good job, guys. You fix the easiest possible problem by cutting it out, while leaving in and doubling down on every other complaint people have had over the years. Maybe in Far Cry 6 we can get jokes about loot boxes, microtransactions, bad writing, broken physics, bad AI, grinding, uplay connectivity. Hell, I would prefer they put the towers back in if they took care of the rest of this mess. It's a broadcast from Sean. You need to see this. You need to see this cliché. Is the deputy carrying a CRT monitor on her? Because she pulled this out while standing on the top of a radio tower. Is John Seed broadcasting this to the entire state? Because you can't control where radio waves go or who picks them up. The testy festy is one of the few times the community comes together for what makes them happiest. Scarfing down cowboy caviar. This town needs a morale boost. Not many people living under the threat of a deranged doomsday cult will think that a bull testicle eating contest is just a thing to raise morale. But you don't live in Ubisoft open world games where everyone is stupid and lacks a sense of priorities. I don't claim to know God's plans, but I know a good thing when I see it. Getting quite a reputation, deputy. How? Last night she was nearly captured by the cult, and this is the first thing of importance she's done. This is one of the problems with trying to write an open-ended narrative. Unless you are willing to go the extra mile and record additional dialogue that reflects the things you have or haven't done, you get weird moments like this where the game acts like you've done one of the other regions first. For a rural town in Montana, they certainly have a lot of minorities represented. Even the ultra right-wing doomsday cult is inclusive, which is not generally the case. From time to time, each region's cult leader will abduct you so they can have a moment to develop their personality and show what their particular brand of crazy is. It really takes you out of the game, and by that I mean it stops everything else to make you do it. You can be abducted at any time, even if you're inside an allied base, in a car, or even in a chopper. Normally, I have to pluck a few threads before the plot starts coming apart of the seams. This game is like finding the grisly murder scene of a Teddy Ruxpin. There are limbs and stuffing everywhere, and someone clearly had sex with a corpse. If you can capture the deputy anytime you want, you can kill her anytime you want. I am fairly certain that a preacher would consider carving a hole in a Bible to hide a gun to be a pretty severe sacrilege. Nick, your grandfather built this place. Really want to turn your back on that? If you can leave the county by plane, then that means you can alert the outside world of what's going on here, which would be way more helpful than sticking it out. I think Far Cry was better off only having one psychopath character to develop. Too many cooks in the kitchen, as they say. So who wants to go first? Hmm? Which one? Well, the deputy kind of has to be the one to answer, doesn't she? Since Deputy Hudson over there has duct tape over her mouth, considering this character is mute, this scene kind of loses the impact this choice would otherwise have. Before we begin. I think it's only proper that Deputy Hudson goes back to her room. Confessions are meant to be private after all. Why, that sounds like the perfect opportunity for me to escape while you wheel her out of here for no reason. Later, John will have no problem performing confessions in a group, so maybe he learned from this. Become wrath. You can't just say a line from one of the most famous movies ever and expect me not to sin it. Let it fill your body and consume your soul, because in the end, you'll still be empty. And I'll be waiting right here. We both will. In other words, grind until we tell you the game is ready to progress. John did warn you that he was waiting for you here and had all of your friends. He even nailed crows around the door to set the mood. You can't walk right into a trap much harder than this. Hold still. It's supposed to say wrath, not rat. People traditionally start by writing the first letter in a word, so you should have already tattooed raw unless you started in the middle of the word. Sin. Must be exposed so it may be absolved. Hey, that's not a bad tagline for a comedic web series about overanalyzing video games. Why are you even letting the preacher hold his own Bible in this situation? And why didn't the gun hidden inside of it fall out when John knocked it to the floor? The deputy is the thorn in your side, the one you specifically came here for. So why start the confession with Nick? In a stroke of incredible fortune, the Eden's Call Bible used the exact same binding and was the same size as the pastor's Bible so they didn't notice when he switched the Bibles on the floor. This world is on the brink. You can feel it in your bones. Look at the headlines. <laughs> Look who's in charge. <laughs> That's about as edgy and topical as the game gets referencing current events. Now I know why this game spent so much time on the bull testicle mission. 
because it lacked a pair of its own. Joseph Seed apparently has the ability to telepathically communicate with you, because every time you take down a member of his family, he talks to you like this. It would have made way more sense had Joseph done these monologues in front of a radio. I'm beginning to suspect that Dutch was pulling the deputy's leg about being the one to kickstart the resistance against the cult. Falls in was already resisting John Seed, and they're already organized against Faith here in the River Valley. And the same will hold true for Jacob's region. Who makes a door that opens outward on a staircase? At least John Seed's kidnappings made a modicum of sense in that they were sending people out to capture you. Faith is what would happen if Galadriel started dealing bath salts. She can pull you into her bliss hallucination anytime she wants. Even when you're surrounded by Resistance members, she can show up, drug you, and lead you away to accomplish a whole lot of nothing. The path to Eden is clear to those who have faith. Why do all of you care so much about this damn deputy? You could kill her anytime you want, but each one of the Seed family feels the need to explain themselves to the person who has every reason to want them dead. Faith apparently made the deputy jump off this statue during the hallucination, and yet she survived. Do you feel different? You can't talk telepathically to someone just because they were on drugs. Believe me, I've tried. I'm telling you, it sure is fun to melt their faces off. And don't worry, man, the angels, they's already brain dead. I'm just giving them a glorious send off to disco heaven, man. This mission has you killing bliss junkies at disco music. That's a bit too Indonesian for me. You know, your brother John tried really hard to convert the deputy as well. What makes you think it's going to work this time? And shouldn't you be really pissed that she killed your brother? This is the world we built for our children? Communities being torn apart? Walls being erected? You were doing those exact same things. You sealed off an entire community against their will and tore it apart while drugging half the population. Once again, the deputy is rescued from being kidnapped with no explanation given. She just wakes up back at the prison with a sheriff injecting adrenaline into her heart. I watched you run this way and that, inflicting violence on those who wish no harm upon you. Your people are pretty clearly trying to kill her. Faith drugged the deputy, brought her to where the U.S. Marshal was being held, and somehow, while both of them were on bliss, the deputy was able to get herself and the Marshal out of this place and back to the prison without even being coherent. I can't go back to working on shit like Far Cry. I'd rather put my balls in a vice and listen to everyone with their fucking opinions about world building and player motivation and believability. If you were that self-aware, you should be channeling that into making the game better instead of writing meta jokes. Okay, you are going to have to explain this magic stuff at some point, because I am no longer buying that it's all a drug trip. Faith drugged the deputy yet again and then shows her something that actually happens in reality miles from her current location. Then the deputy wakes up from the drugs right outside the prison where the event she just witnessed occurred. They let the marshal keep his gun even though he had been on bliss for days and had clearly been affected by it. Teleportation is always used to be a dick cliche. So what exactly was Faith doing during this fight? In the bliss, she was doing magic, but in reality, she has no weapons or physical abilities. This game would have left itself more room to maneuver with Faith if they had gone with the approach that she was just a mass hallucination caused by the drugs, and was never real to begin with. But that isn't the case, since she was in the church at the start of the game before the deputy was ever exposed to bliss. I will be... the hero. And then... you'll choose. Here's a lady who has played Far Cry games before. This level started inside the prison, yet ends inside Faith's bunker miles away with no explanation on how the deputy and the sheriff arrived there. The deputy walked through a door inside the prison and was transported here along with the sheriff. Slowest attempted suicide ever. Now I want you to find that goddamn Joseph seat, bring him to justice, or put him in the ground. You've certainly changed in regards to that. When the game started, you wanted to leave him alone and not arrest him. I guess it only took the situation becoming terminal before you decided to do your job. They locked Jess up in a cage with her bow? Far Cry 3 had the protagonist get taken prisoner multiple times, and it led to some great moments and made sense. This game has no excuse. You only just started brainwashing the deputy. How does your music box playing only you already trigger hallucinations? You have to condition that response first. I get that the game is pointing some satire at video game violence with the timer and the multicolored gun skins while raising its eyebrows and saying, meh, see? Really makes you think. Meanwhile, I'm thinking Bioshock did it better. Now would you kindly move on to letting me grind progress so I can be done with this? These resistance members know that Jacob uses brainwashing to turn people into unwitting killers, yet they still rescue the deputy and bring her back to their base after finding her tied up inside Jacob's brainwashing facility. This is stupid. And this is dangerous. You both know better. What was I supposed to do? Leave him to die. Tammy. They've been in that room for God knows how long. I've seen what it does to people. Tammy makes a solid point. At the very least, Eli could have rescued the deputy, then sent her on her way. Instead, he puts her to work doing missions for him. This is not up for discussion. We need him. Playing a female deputy, by the way, this is a rural community. You don't need to worry that much about assuming someone's gender. But you, you're something that cult ain't expecting. Ain't expecting? They send people to hunt her down and capture her. The cult is infatuated with her at this point. Do you remember the Grand View Hotel? That shithole we pulled you out of? Need you to head back there. Jacob nabbed a whitetail by the name of Briggs. 
And he's using the same brain-melting nonsense he tried on you. So why didn't you burn the place down after rescuing the deputy from it? Depriving your enemy of resources is a pretty basic rule of war. Wheaties cooked up a little deprogramming package. Same thing we used on you. Need you to swap out the tape they got running in Briggs' room. Okay. Eli's deprogramming tape is Get Free by the Vines. Outside of the Get Free course, the rest of that song is likely to program this guy to move out of California. Here's another mission that involves climbing a radio tower. Earlier, this game promised it wasn't going to have me climbing them, but this is the third mission by my account that has done it. I was shot out of the air and captured by Jacob's men while gliding through the mountains in a wingsuit, and yet I survived to be dragged back for more programming. Since the deputy has to know that Jacob is trying to program her, why doesn't she inform Eli about it since it can't be good for them? Or just listen to Get Free to deprogram herself. Does a rhetorical question still count if it sounds as stupid as that last one? This time you don't even escape or get rescued after being taken. The deputy just wakes up in the woods surrounded by dead people. Deputy, it's Eli. Just checking in. Nobody's seen you in a while. Since Dutch can contact the deputy right after she wakes up and inform her that no one has seen her for a while, that must mean Jacob never removed her radio to begin with, and Dutch should have been a radio contact this entire time. Also, no one puts two and two together back at the resistance that the deputy disappearing for days might mean that she was captured and brainwashed again. The English language should have a word for the feeling you get when you have to repeatedly criticize the same thing over and over. Repetitive element. Yeah, that's pretty good. I just want to point out that the purpose for brainwashing the deputy is the user to kill Eli, who leads the resistance in this region. If Jacob's hunters are so good that they can track down and capture the deputy anytime they want, they should be able to do the same to Eli. Trials. See? He's got it all planned out. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then he's got you. Even someone as on edge as Pratish should still be capable of being specific about what Jacob is brainwashing her for. We had a bear here named Cheeseburger. Bit of a local celebrity, actually. Had a soft spot for Chad's barbecue. But he got the diabetes. Fun fact, bears get diabetes symptoms every year during hibernation. It's what allows them to break down their fat stores during winter. Once they come out of hibernation, the diabetic effect returns to normal. So you're not going to give a bear diabetes by feeding it too many cheeseburgers. If them Obama-loving libtars find out I can't look after my own property, I can kiss this Senate run goodbye. I think this game might be the result of someone making a wish on a monkey's paw. I could just as easily win if them Peggy's just didn't show up to vote. You realize you're asking a deputy about election fraud and murder, right? I get the feeling this cult is conflicted and would quickly fall apart. One faction is all about deranged confessions of sin by cutting off your own skin. Another is into dragging yourself into a blissful stupor so the world looks like the opening 10 minutes of a Disney movie. And this faction is made up of hardcore survivalists with a penchant for brainwashing. How could you have not seen Jacob standing just off to the side of your cage? And did Jacob just place the music box on the ground hoping you would do this so he could step on your arm? At first, I thought that going through this exact same scenario four times in a row was a bit much, and getting repetitive even if it had a bigger point. And then I realized that this was actually a critique of the repetitive nature of Far Cry games. After brainwashing you into killing Eli in the very heart of the White Tail's hidden base, Jacob appears during a time freeze and tells the deputy that he will be waiting outside for her. And I'm sick of sitting this game for what appears to be magic. Listen to me. It was Jacob. We've seen this before. Yes, and you were the one most adamant about not letting the deputy into the group. You were proven right. So strangely, she is the one to stop the others from killing the deputy, and then trust her to kill Jacob even though she's brainwashed and just killed her friend. This underground bunker designed to resist nuclear explosions can handle a guy shooting some pipes inside it without exploding. I don't know why that snot grosses me out more than most of the stuff I've seen in games. We will be waiting for you. Where it all began. It all ends where it began cliche. No explanation will be given on how Joseph managed to drag and capture every single side character in the game now that his operation has been taken apart. Give them father. They know not what they do. I only kidnapped, drugged, and murdered people in the name of God. Where did it all go so wrong? I'm not sure if the original Far Cry was decanonized at some point, but if it wasn't, this ending makes little sense, because the first game takes place in 2025, and it was most certainly not post-apocalypse. Joseph is once again the only one to come out of a crash, conscious and unharmed. Somehow, he even got out of his handcuffs. So we're stuck in a Fallout shelter during Armageddon, and there's 1950s music playing over the credits. Who knew we were playing the prequel to Fallout this entire time? back to working on shit like Far Cry? I'd rather put my balls in a vice and listen to everyone with their fucking opinions. 